This video is entitled, But Wait, There's More. I know everybody's seen, <laughs> seen the Ronco commercials, the infomercials that, um, that are up all the time on TV. If you call in the next five minutes, you'll also get, and when you order this today, in the next 20 minutes, you'll also get, and they'll give you something, you know, to just sweeten the deal, to make it sound cooler. But this, my favorite part is always, but wait, there's more. They, they always throw the extra. But wait, there's more. To make it seem like it's, there's more to it than there actually is. So just try to throw something on top that's not really that significant, but it does change it somewhat. You know, it makes it a little bit better. But when you look at the whole deal, it's something cheap or tacky that's added on. And it, and it basically doesn't, doesn't really add anything to what you already have. That's the problem with Christians right now with far too many Christians that that believe and teach false doctrine and they twist the Bible around and they have false beliefs and they, they teach lies and half-truths. Like for instance, the, Jesus says in the Holy Bible that people who are adulterers and murderers and liars and homosexuals and you know, sexual, live in sexual perversion all the people that are living in sin, that they won't go to heaven unless they repent and ask Jesus Christ to forgive their sins. But Christians say, but wait, there's more. If you see what I'm telling you right now, you'll also get, and they twist it around, and they try to tell you that, you know, well, um, that's not what the Bible really meant, my friends. Um, God didn't really mean that, uh, and if he did, it was for the old days. It doesn't mean anything now because that was the old times. God is a lot kinder and gentler now, and what God really meant, this is, their, this is what they're, they don't say this with their own mouth, this is what they're saying though. What God really meant to say is that um, if you are doing any of those things like lying, cheating, stealing, uh, murdering, raping, a homosexual, a sexual deviant, that's only if you're not a Christian. Once you become a Christian, Everybody knows. <laughs> Everybody knows that Jesus died on the cross for all of our sins, past, present, and future. And all Christians know that that um, sin won't keep us from heaven. And no matter what we do, and, and even if you, and if there was a Christian who was living in sin, that means they weren't saved to start with. They were never truly saved. <laughs> let's rewind it. Let's, let's slam the slam the air brakes on real quick. Point one. The Bible's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He don't change. So what he said then is what he said now is what he says tomorrow. Okay? If He's talking to Christians. If you're a Christian living in sin, filth, perversion, sexual immorality, homosexuality, whatever you're doing, lying, cheating, stealing, adultery, if you have this in your heart and you don't repent before Jesus Christ comes back, you're not getting raptured. If you don't repent before the uh, end of the tribulation, when Jesus comes back, you're not going to be in the millennium. You're going to be in hell, my friends. That's what the Bible says. That's, that's just point blank. You might not like it. You might not believe it. You might not appreciate it. But that's just Bible 101. So let's just let's just knock that one off the, off the shelf. You, If you're living in unconfessed sin, unrepentant sin and iniquities, you are not going to go to heaven. Okay? It's not going to happen. Point two... Jesus Christ says with his own words in the Holy Bible, I end, my, I end my prayer on my videos of this all the time, every time, that Jesus said with his own words that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. Not some, not most, not 99.9%, all. So you call Jesus Christ a liar by saying that person wasn't saved to start with. So you're calling God a liar, Jesus a liar, the Holy Bible book of lies. Come on, friends, put the brakes on. Throw it in reverse. You're really, really messing up here. Start focusing, okay? Start focusing and stop playing games. There is no, there is no wait, but wait, there's more. There is no Ronco extra 10-minute deal. The Holy Bible is a pure holy book. It's the manuscript of God. It's his own words written down by select humans that he chose to be his scribes. This is the very word of God. It's, it's, so if you reject the Bible, you reject God. If you call the Bible, anything in the Bible untrue, then you call the whole Bible a book of lies, or you call God a liar. And, I'm, and you know, I'm sorry. You might not like it, 
You might not like my forwardness. You might not like my directness. But my my channel is called the 100% uncut, pure, biblical channel. That's it. What you see here and hear here is going to be from the Bible. 100% uncut, pure, and true. The way it used to be taught in the Bible days. The way it should be taught everywhere. Now, you should be able to go on, on a corner church anywhere and hear what I preach here every single day. But you don't hear it anymore because pastors are afraid to offend the flock. They're afraid. They've told me that before. They're afraid to chase anybody away by telling them the truth. They're, they they want to keep feeding them milk toast and lies and half-truths and false doctrine. They want to feed them steak and meat and potatoes and and they're just leading them to hell. They want their money. They want their, num their numbers on the rolls. It, it's just so sad, my friends. There is no but wait. There's more. The Bible stands alone, a standalone document, word for word, Genesis to Revelation, every single word, cover to cover, is what the Bible says, is what it means. And again, God means exactly what he says when he says that anybody who adds anything to the Bible, they will get the plagues contained in the Bible added to their life. Anyone who takes away anything from the Bible, their eternal life in heaven is taken away. And these new, like the 2011 NIV, they took like 65,000 words out of the Bible, my friends. These new big uh, three major publishers in Sin Erica now, formerly America, now Sin Erica, filthy sin ridden cesspool. Now, in, in, in three of their Bibles, and these are big publishers, they removed the Father and the Son and replaced it with Allah because it offends the Muslims. Please, I don't care what the Muslims think. I don't care what anybody thinks but God and Jesus Christ. I work for them. I live for them. What I do is is what they want me to do and i'm not going to stand for this stuff i call this stuff out all the time and i'll call you out in a heartbeat if you come on here and try to tell me some stuff that's not biblical i'm going to call you on it there is no but wait there's more the bible there is no more what it says cover to cover word for word exactly what it means and you need to read it with holy spirit vision if you don't have holy spirit vision if you're looking at it through human eyes through backslidden eyes you won't see anything you'll be all confused and you'll be all twisted and tangled holy spirit vision is always 2020. You'll never mess up reading the Bible with Holy Spirit vision. So the time to get serious and you know leave the but wait there's more. Leave that kind of if you call now in the next 10 minutes leave that stuff for the infomercials. The Holy Bible there is no more. But wait there is no more. Read it teach it and live it. Walk the walk don't just talk the talk and do not I repeat, do not start spreading false doctrine because if you do, my friends, those you lead to hell, their blood's on your hands as well. It's time to be serious. Being a Christian is not a game. Living for Jesus Christ is not a game. Living for Him is it's, it's everything. We have to put everything we have into living for Jesus Christ. If we're not going to do that, if we're not willing to give Jesus everything, He doesn't want anything. He said that He'd rather us be cold or hot than to be lukewarm. He'd rather us be cold than lukewarm. He'll spit us out of His mouth. Vomit us out of his mouth, he said. And we'd be better off if we were never even a Christian at all, if we become a Christian and backslide. The Bible is just full of so many verses. People just won't believe it and they won't see it. They want to twist it around. So again, don't bring your false prophecy, the false doctrine, and twist the Bible around me because you might be selling, but Paul Kidd's not buying. And I will rebuke, correct, and teach you every time. I'm not judging you. Don't say I'm judging you. I'm not. I'm doing the Bible mandate, biblical mandated to rebuke, correct, and teach all Christians who are in sin away from the truth and just who are teaching false doctrine and prophecy. We're all supposed to do that. If we all did that, man, we could police, clean house, police each other, and get on fire for God. Because Christians right now, 95 plus percent of Christians are extinct. They're spiritually dead. Those of us who remain are endangered species. We're not going to be extinct though because God will never let the entire church go down. There will always be a remnant. The holy remnant will always be everywhere. Christ won't let us be extinguished, like Israel. Israel may be punished or judged by God, not by man. Don't you, don't you dare judge Israel. Don't you dare judge Israel. That's up to God. We're supposed to love Israel. Because God said, I'll bless those who bless Israel and curse those who curse her. But we need to make sure that we stay close to the Lord and get off the extinction list, my friends. Come back to the endangered species and join us. Get out in the field and reap the harvest. Let's work for Christ while there's still yet a little bit of time. No time to play games anymore, my friends. No time to play church. It's time to reap the harvest. The harvest is so plentiful, it's rotting in the fields. Jesus asked, the harvest is plentiful. Where's my harvesters? I'm asking that too. Where's Jesus' harvesters at? Let's get out and share the good news of Jesus Christ.
Let's get out and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's make a difference in what little time we have left. Point him to the cross where Jesus can save him with his precious blood. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, please help Christians to realize there is, there is any more. There's no, but wait, there's more. If you call now, there's none of that. If you read the Bible the way it's written, that's it. There's no more. There's no way there's more. It's the way it's written. It's how it is. We have to live it, breathe it, speak it, walk it, talk it, share it exactly the way it's written. Genesis to Revelation, cover to cover, every word in between. Help us to understand you mean what you say. Don't twist or pervert the Bible. Don't add or subtract. Or you'll add or subtract the plagues in our eternal life for us in heaven. Because we're going to spend eternal life somewhere. If it's not in heaven, it's in hell. Keep us pure, Jesus. Keep us holy. When we sin, help us to fall on our knees and repent, to come back to you. I'm talking about Christians now. To be good. Our, righteous, our righteousness is, of our own righteousness is as filthy rags. But through you, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, we can be pure and holy and emulate Jesus Christ, our perfect example. We'll never be perfect this side of heaven, but we're, we're to strive to be as perfect and close to Jesus Christ as we can. Help us, Lord. Convict us. Rebuke us. Correct us. Teach us. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. As always, friends, if you watch this and don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I know I've sinned and done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth and died on the cross for my sins. I believe you're risen again on the third day, went back to the right hand of the Father, and since that time, you've been preparing a place in heaven for all Christians forever. Please forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Cleanse my heart. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. If you pray this prayer, Jesus says that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. Everyone. If you'd like me to pray this prayer with you, send me an inbox or private message. I'd love to pray with you. It's my honor and joy. You can call me if you want. I do it on Facebook. I do it here. If you have a friend, neighbor, or loved one who don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you have a sick friend, loved one, neighbor, sick co-worker, or sick pet, if you're sick, if you need a job, car, home, food, clothing, water, whatever your needs, send me an inbox or private message. I'd love to pray with you. It's my joy. It's my privilege, man. It's my passion to pray. I had a gift of faith. I prayed for it. God graciously gave it to me. And I have mustard seed faith. The Holy Spirit flows through my veins and the very membranes of my cells everywhere. And when I pray, I pray believing in my heart 100%, speaking out loud with my mouth 100%, knowing He'll answer all my prayers if I pray in His holy will. I'll do the same for you, my friends. Test Him. His word never turns empty. I know we're all busy. Life's so busy, so thanks for taking time to watch this video. And please share with others. Share the video. Share the link to my channel with friends, neighbors, co-workers, loved ones, with uh, neighbors, with strangers. Drop it in a blog somewhere, online, or in a post somewhere, MSN, Yahoo, MSNBC, wherever you go, Google. And so we can get the word out, the holy word of God. For all for his glory, never for mine, yours, or anybody's. All praise, honor, and glory is always reflected back to God from me. I love you guys an awful lot. I pray for you all the time. Every day, I pray for my friends. And I just pray that God will bless you. Thank you. Good night.